Until the late 1940s, uh, all records that were available commercially were 78 RPM records. In 1949, however, the RCA Record Company invented a different format. It was called the 45 RPM record. It was a small 7-inch single and had a large hole in the middle. This gradually began to grow in popularity, and the popularity of it coincided with um, basically with the popularity of rock and roll. As rock and roll started coming of age in the mid to late 50s, the 45 was taking over and really became the main format for artists to put singles out on. Part of what made it convenient was the invention of small record players like these. These only played 45s, but they were small, convenient, the speaker was contained within it, and teenagers could take them home, you know, plug them in in their rec room in the basement or up in their bedroom or whatever, and um, with the large thing in the middle, the, on the sort of cylindrical item that's in the middle there, they could s literally stack the singles up and put on, automatically play six, seven singles by different artists, and they could have parties where they'd um, use this to create the music by, or they could just go up and sit in their bedroom and listen to the music or whatever, but the size of the single and the um, size of these uh, little record players made them very convenient. And these record players were also quite inexpensive at the time. So it was really something that, just as many teenagers had to have transistor radios, they also had to have their 45 RPM record players. Around the same time that the 45 was invented, there was also the invention of the 33 and a third RPM album. And this was the big 12-inch album that people are pretty familiar with nowadays. The th thing about it was that it had very great audio playback capabilities the sound quality was very good, and it also could contain generally about 12 songs, six on each side. So instead of just having one or two songs on the record, now you had the ability for artists to create an album, a work, where they'd have several songs, like I say, as many as you know, 12 or even sometimes more, on one recording. And again, the sound quality was also really good. Initially, in the earliest days of the album, they were primarily used to be a grouping of singles. An artist would have several hits out and then they'd maybe put three or four of their singles on here and then some other tracks that were sort of throwaways. But then in the 1960s, and really I, th I think the Beatles deserve a lot of credit for this, the albums themselves became works of art. The Beatles started making things like Rubber Soul and Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band where they were really conceiving of it as a work in its entirety, as an album. And that was really, really caused the album then to replace the 45 as the um, main format. This machine down here is one that um, dates to probably around 1967 or so. And it's sort of similar to what we had here with the 45 record players. It was small, it was self-contained, it was also stereo, so you had the two speakers. But it was small enough that kids could take them and have them move them around. They could take it to a party, they could play it again in their basement, in their bedroom, wherever. And so it became very handy for kids. Adults, however, around this time, got more into what was called component audio. And you'd have turntables like this that had to be hooked to complete audio systems, where you'd have a separate receiver, you'd have separate speakers, you could place the speakers around the room wherever you wanted, the uh, receiver could have a lot of power, and you'd plug it in. And this was really something that um, was a much higher quality sound experience, um, but it was great for something like a, an album like Sgt. Pepper, where you wanted to hear it uh, with great stereophonic sound and all that. This was the, the turntable you'd have. Of course, eventually this turntable then, in the 1970s, uh, became the main uh, actually the main instrument for rap artists, hip-hop artists, who would take these turntables and manually operate them to create different creations from the, um, from the records that they, that they had. So, so it's really something that you know, began as something to listen to these albums on, and then it became an instrument in its own right.